just thank you for all that I have in you, and all that you are in my life, for all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food for my table. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ. Uh, this is Apostle Alan Coleman, Jr. I'm in a good mood today. I feel good. God is so yeah. faithful. We're saying that because it's, it's God's will that we uplift other ministries. You know, this is not the only ministry that the Lord has made available for you to receive the word by there are other ministries and we're going to get into that today we have a dynamite show today also with us some of you might know him i'm not gonna use his his uh, old name because you would remember him then so what i'm gonna do is is use the name of which god has assigned to him prophet howard boone in the name of jesus and uh Y'all better watch out because God got God got prophets out there. God has ministers out there and they be right under your nose half the time. But it's a blessing and, and you might wonder how, when, or did God call him. But you're going to find out because next week by God's grace, he's going to be ministering uh, under that prophetic anointing that is on his life. And the blessing is you could tune in and watch from 3 to 4 next Saturday. Um, it's not going to cost you any money, so uh, it's not, <laughs> God is faithful, it's not going to cost you no money, it's just a blessing to hear a word from the Lord, and, and uh, also Pastor Keith Akins, he'll be coming, uh, ministering under the anointing of pastor, because if you remember, we're still dealing with the doctrine of the church, so uh, we are now going into the ministry gifts, and what's going to happen is you're just going to see the proof of these ministry gifts by watching God use those that he has called and anointed. And I guess the Lord is going to use me to minister uh, in the office of apostle, about the apostle. I, I, you know, I'd rather that the Lord use another apostle because sometimes when God is using you to minister about the office you're in, people will think that you're trying to uplift yourself. So I, I uh, for that reason, would really wish that the Lord would send another apostle uh, <laughs> but you know um, everybody doesn't believe the same thing and I, I know that there's a lot of apostles all over the world I'm not just going to say New Haven period all over the world there's a lot of apostles but Paul also spoke about false apostles so uh, I'm not going to ask anyone to come and minister about something that that God has not instituted to be into the body of Christ um, 
again, with every minister that comes on this show, it is not, I, I don't go around interviewing anybody. It's the Lord that says to invite and to uh, uh, open up the door that God may use his servant, whether male or female. So, you know, that's that's all according to the will of God. So, uh, God bless you. Let's get into our lesson today because this is the third part of the biblical doctrine of the church. And uh, first... First, let's open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, asking you first and foremost to forgive us, Lord, for our shortcomings, for our sins, for any and everything, Lord, that have come from our flesh that just doesn't please you. Well, today we're asking for restoration again. We're asking for encouragement. We're asking for strength. We need a fresh anointing. Lord, we need the kind of anointing that says go forward and don't wallow in your mistakes. We need the kind of anointing that chases demons away. We need the kind of anointing that shuts the mouths of the accusers. Lord, we need the kind of anointing, oh Lord, that, that just, just deals with all of those things, Lord, that are in people's lives that have become a need. Oh, Holy Ghost, you do the teaching today. Make your presence known in this place and on these premises. And by your power, oh God, in the name of Jesus, minister unto us. Give us a receiving spirit. And Lord, just whatever you tell me to say shall be said. And I won't apologize for none you say. And I'm asking you, Lord, to touch that soul out there today that you want to minister to that you may be glorified. Use every piece of equipment in here. Use every piece of furniture. Use every light, every glass, every piece of ice, every utensil. In the control room, use everything in there to glorify you. And oh, ha, hallelujah. And Lord, just let your anointing just spread throughout this studio. Forgive what was done here earlier. Forgive what was done here last night. Forgive what was done here during the week. Oh, in the name of Jesus, sanctify this ground and make it holy, Lord, that you should meet us here as you met Moses on that mountain. You said, let no one come near. Let not even an animal eat off of this mountain. Oh, hallelujah. And even today, Lord, you teach and anoint your word. And bring scripture back to my memories. Give us all the receiving spirit. Fill us with the word of wisdom. And the word of knowledge. Give us a spiritual understanding of your word. In Jesus name. Oh Lord. You just teach. <laughs> you just teach. You just preach. Let the tongues fly. Let the prophecies go. And Lord you, you do this. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for hearing us. And for answering us. In Jesus name. We pray. Amen. Oh thank you Lord. Y'all got to excuse the squeaking. I know you hear that. That's uh. There's some things in this studio. That are. Failing the test. <laughs> oh God is so faithful. I'd like to ask you today to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Oh Lord, today, I mean, we're, we're going to receive what thus saith the Lord. Yep, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 so I want you to turn your Bibles to and if um, the Lord shall leave we're going to give away another free First Bible. Corinthians chapter 12 verses 12 through 31 <clears throat> excuse me and it reads on this wise for as the body is one and hath many members 
and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Catholic, excuse me, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, Wait a minute. Oh, let's go to verse, I skipped 16, right? Let's go back to verse 16. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Mm, that's deep. If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now God hath, but now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. You got to catch that, as it pleased God. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. <laughs> and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schisms. No schism. That means division in the body but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. <laughs> now ye are the body of Christ. See, God was telling Paul all of that to now tell you, now ye are the body of Christ. And members in particular, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, now this don't necessarily mean the order. This is just how God was leading Paul to write this at the time, because when we look at another part of scripture, the order is going to be different. Okay? So don't think that because God called me an apostle that I'm a president of the church, because I'm not. Christ is the head. I'm just a member like you are, but we, we're doing different jobs in the name of Jesus. I need you and you need me. Okay? That's right. Verse 28, And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Now, are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues. Do all interpret. But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Now we're going to, as we get deeper into the ministry gifts and the spiritual gifts, 
Because there's some people I hear say, when the scripture says, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, do all have the gifts of healing, a lot of people say, well, that scripture tells you right there, everybody's not going to speak in tongues. See, what, what Paul was talking about here was ministry gifts. There's certain office of ministry that require the speaking of tongues to operate that ministry. If God uses a prophet to prophesy, you're going to hear that prophet speak in tongues first. The, 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 the tongues is, is, is a, a, a vital importance to the prophetic ministry. So we're going to get deeper into that later, but I just the Lord was just telling me to share that with you. So that way the enemy won't trap you up and mess you up before you get any food out of this lesson. All right, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 through 24. And uh, this is this is a blessing. <laughs> so, in the name of Jesus, receive this. Out of the King James Version, it reads, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation. The vocation means calling. Wherewith ye are called. With all lowliness and meekness. With long-suffering, forbearing, one another in love. We're in first, I mean we're in Ephesians chapter one. Now we get ready to go to verse three. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. See when God called you in office. God had an assignment for you by the calling he's put on you. Okay? A lot of times God calls us to be a pastor and we want to be prophet. God calls us to be an evangelist. We want to claim a pastor. And we're wrong for that. Okay? I'm going to go to verse 4 again. There is one body and one spirit. Now Paul is talking as God is leading him. As far as God is concerned, there's one body. The body of Christ. Not Baptist, Methodist, Pentecost. All that is garbage. That's separation. These are employees of Satan that have come inside of the, 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 the believers to separate them. See, if you're walking around thinking that you serve God better because you're a Baptist, and then you tell me I don't serve God right because I'm non-denominational. That's separation. I don't know why God is leaving me like that. Verse 4, again, there is one body and one spirit. The Holy Ghost you claim you have is not different than the Holy Ghost that's leading me. This is why God will use you to tell somebody something and hear some confirmation through someone else because it's the same spirit. Praise God. Back to verse 4. There's meat in this. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith. Uh oh. Not, not five faiths. You can't say, I'm a Baptist, you're a Methodist. That's two faiths. The Bible says, <laughs> one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Didn't mean the water one either. We're baptized into the, the body of Christ by the spiritual baptism. The Holy Ghost is the transferer. That transfer you from darkness into light. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Bet the world think the scripture talking to you, huh? But it's not. Because of verse 7 it says, But to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. What, whatever it takes to get you where you got to go 
in Christ according to the calling that's on your life, God has given you that grace to get you there. Hmm. Verse 8, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. We talked that about that one time about there being a battle in hell for you. Christ died on the cross. The Spirit of God got out of that body and walked down to the lower parts of the earth. First to the unsaved part of hell. Stripped Satan of his power. Snatched the keys from him of death. And then went to the saved part, which is paradise. You remember when he told that thief? This day you shall be me in paradise. He was talking about Abraham's bosom. And he went to the same part of hell, led them after they heard the gospel, and sure enough, received, led them from there to the abode of God. To rest. To rest. See, Abraham's bosom no more was in the same part of hell. Now there is no saved part of hell. Why? Because Christ died. He came. He died. He rose. And that opened back the way to heaven for us. The Bible says when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended, meaning Christ that went down, is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. That he might fill all things. And he gave some. Now I'm talking about the gifts. He gave some apostles. <laughs> and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers they, they had to get a twofold anointing uh, as you see here in scripture pastor and teacher uh, every every pastor should be a teacher but every teacher is not a pastor so the pastor needed a twofold anointing one to shepherd you two to feed you that took an anointing. Verse 12. He did all this for the perfecting or maturing of the saints. For the work of the ministry. Ministry meaning service. I'm supposed to serve you. And you're supposed to serve me. We're supposed to care for one another. As 1 Corinthians 12 says. Because we are brothers in Christ Jesus. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying or the building up. Of the body of Christ. A lot of times God lead us to have other ministers on this show. To build up the body. To let you know that God has a remnant. Out there in his name for himself. It's not always the one standing in the big building with the fiberglass podium and the 300 strong choir with the long pretty robes. It's, it's not always them that God is using to go out and draw the folk. Y'all don't understand this. To go out and draw the folk in. See, sometimes in order to... Some people clothes be so clean they don't want to get them dirty. So sometime in order for you to get your car fixed, you got to go to that mechanic that don't mind getting dirty. Because see, they're going to get deep down in the nitty gritty. The lost are out there in the street. A lot of God's prophets, apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists are on the street corners. Drinking. Drunk. But getting a testimony. Because see, when God, by his grace, delivers them and educate them, God is going to send them out to you to say, look at what God done. You know how I left, but look at how I came back. God is so far. I don't know why God is going this way. Oh, Jesus. 
verse 12 for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying or the building up again of the body of Christ verse 13 how long Lord Lord they said the office of prophet is closed I heard the apostolic church say the office of apostle is so high they don't believe that nobody can stand in that office some of them even say it's closed I'm going to tell the truth y'all but verse 13 says that these offices are open till we all come in the unity of the faith what faith that one faith and what is that I believe that Jesus is the son of God came down from heaven <laughs> died on the cross rose three days later for me gave me all power in his name went back and sat at the right hand of God that faith anything else is not faith according to God anything else is foolishness <laughs> uncivilized then we also hear about what did God say about preaching that other gospel it, it got to be the gospel raw and uncut till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God see we got so much to learn about Jesus yes we got so much to learn about Jesus you we got to know what he did how he died now see all oh Lord wait, let me let me go as God leave me unto a perfect man perfect meaning mature unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ it is God's intention for us to be just like Jesus so God put the gifts in the body to get us there <laughs> he put the gifts in there to bring us there he put pastors in the body to shepherd the sheep he put the evangelists in the body to go out and get the sheep he put the prophets in the body to be God's representative to talk to the sheep and even to intercede for the sheep he put the apostles in that office to establish the sheep he put the teachers in that office to teach the sheep till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ why Lord verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine folk could come and tell you anything you just believe it sometime by the slate of men and cunning craftiness not just regular craftiness but cunning craftiness that kind of craftiness that if you're not in the spirit and, and using the spirit of discernment you won't even see it that kind of craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive you somebody that's in there so-called office just to deceive you just to get so they have a, a hidden agenda they want to look good on TV they want to look good preaching in the pulpit they want to look good with the robes on they want to appear to be holy cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love this is what God wants to do speak the truth in love may grow up into him in all things in the way that you talk in the way that you think in the way that you walk God knows in Apostle Coleman's life there's some rough edges that God has got to just clean out and straighten up and to make straight God got to do it because I am supposed to be just like Jesus Christ may grow up into him in all things which is the head who even Christ but speaking the truth in love <laughs> may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ God knows 
Come on, you got to be honest. In, in all of the, the houses of worship, Jesus is not the subject. The subject is how much of an offering you took last week. The subject is how Sister Sue is getting ready to get a pastor's aid award. The subject is we need a new bus. The subject is uh, there's not people coming to Bible study on time. Wrong subject. The subject should be Christ. Jesus. He draws. If the Son of Man be lifted up, he said, I'll draw all men. Not some. I'm not going to get two and leave ten. All men. Verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. You know what that means? That means as we operate, as God called us to operate, the body won't be lacking nothing because what I don't have, God has put it in you. Look at that. Hey, God said it. God said to say that. Because that's what it means. It takes an anointing to, to read this. This is not on paper, y'all. This is not on paper. This is how God, God's giving me this hot off the press. God said in verse 16, for whom the whole body fitly joined together, meaning Christ is the head, through him the body is joined together and compacted, which means held together, which means pressed together, by that which every joint supplies. <laughs> uh. What? Not a bit. But it's right. I wouldn't say that's in the Bible. About type being right, but I got to say it's true. What you going to do? In the name of Jesus. The Lord said, and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part meaning every uh, according to what you do the body be lifted up lord help me to uh, say that in an understandable way if you've been called to preach preach if you've been called to teach teach if god anointed you as an apostle establish if you've been anointed as a prophet then prophesy preach minister do what god has called the prophets to do therefore your working will be effectual in the measure of every part who maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love in love this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. This, this, this is not what you were taught that we should be. You see that title? God has. And look at this word right here. Anointed. You see that? Anointed. Anointed. Let me see. Let me see if I can follow this. God, uh, God has an anointed and divinely appointed position for you in Jesus' name and in the body of Christ. God got a position for you. That's why you're hearing this. This ain't no accident. 
verse 20 says, but ye have not so learned Christ. We weren't taught that Christians are supposed to walk unclean. And listen, I got to say it again because, see, the devil's trying to attack me, but in Jesus' name, I got to be free. There's things that Apostle Coleman wrestles with that God is still cleaning me in, and I'm expecting him to continue to clean me. Why? Because in sin did my mother conceive me. That's no excuse, but that's the truth. So I got to fight all my life every day. God knows it's a fight standing in this office. You got people that ain't even doing nothing, ridiculing you. You got people that are sitting back with their legs crossed, criticizing. You got people that have not picked up the cross that are telling you how to walk. Trouble. <laughs> but let me tell you something. You can go ahead and watch Apostle Coleman go through. You can go ahead and talk about Apostle Coleman. I'm not talking about you, but if there's something in my life that you see that you want and it causes you to make me the topic of your conversation, then go ahead. When you're ready to get some, come and let me know. When you see how God is using us and you're ready to be used, come and let me know. There's one of the days when I don't feel like being used by God. I said, I feel like the Spirit of God said unto me, No, you, you tie down to this. See, when God calls you to something and places you over something, you tie down to it. And God knows you're going to suffer. Hold that thought. <laughs> That's right. Verse 20, but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. He's, Paul is saying, you haven't learned to be unclean, and to uh, 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 allow schisms in the body, and, and to hurt and backbite. If you really know Jesus, you ain't learned that from him. If you were talking to the right Jesus. 22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. <laughs> Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And, see now God is, God is willing to trade. I'll take this from you and give you this. Give me what, Lord? Verse 23, and be renewed. Look, look, go back to verse 22. God said, that ye put off. In verse 23, he says, and be renewed. In the spirit. <laughs> you ready, brother? <laughs> and that ye put on the new man. Look at this, y'all. Verse 25. No, verse 24. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Hold your toes because you're about to get stepped on. There's all kind of holiness out there. <laughs> There's sanctified holiness. There's supposed to be holiness. There's a look at me because it seems like I practice kind of holiness. There's a can I get five more dollars holiness. There's a oh I sing real good holiness. But the Bible says that ye put on the new men which after God is created in righteousness and True holiness. It is very important to understand the pattern of these lessons that God ministers through this and all other ministries that he set up. That's why when one of God's anointed speakers are speaking, everyone under his or her voice should be totally attentive and listen. And hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the body of Christ. 
It shouldn't stop there. I mean, if the lost were to listen to the message of the gospel, then they'd see that sure enough, whatever God does for me or us, he'll do for you or them. Meaning the unsaved. In these days and times, the body is really experiencing spiritual sickness. And in a sense, we're powerless against these certain spiritual afflictions that's come upon us. Sure, we often speak about victory, but when we look up victory in the Webster's Dictionary, it is defined as the overcoming of an enemy or antagonist. It's also defined as achievement of mastery or success in a struggle or endeavor, which means a serious determined effort against odds or difficulties. When we look at the body of Christ and its present state, we or some of us see that the body is in trouble. Yes, we have an enemy or enemies that fight against us daily and in a lot of situations they seem to be winning. In some situations the devil has been taking over the church. You're in the church you're getting half gospel. Again, three hours worth of who got what, who needs what, and can we get what, and then 15 minutes of what God said, and then when the chair get pulled out, watch it tomorrow, ain't nobody getting saved. The carpets in them aisles should be very clean and untrodden, because ain't no dirty feet walk down them aisles. Paul realized that there were enemies coming against us. And to that he wrote to prove this, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said this, the Spirit of God told Paul to write, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities with an S, against powers with an S, against rulers of the darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Jesus knew that there was an enemy against any and everyone who has accepted him. In John 17 verse 15, Jesus prayed, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Evil here is from the Greek word, Paneros, which means hurtful, in effect or influence. It means hurtful. Figuratively, Paneros means calamitous. Also, it means ill, in other words, diseased. But morally, it means culpable, which means guilty or criminal. It also means vicious. Singular, this word paneros means the devil. He's described as being paneros. Jesus prayed that God keep the disciples from the devil. It seems everyone knoweth that we're in trouble except us. If you talk to a Jehovah Witness, they'll say, we go out door to door. What about y'all? If you talk to a Muslim, they say, we take care of our bodies, but what about y'all? If you talk to a Catholic, they say that we do good works, but what about y'all? We that are in the true faith are the only ones that don't see we're in trouble. Going to church on Sunday, partying the other six days. In the Elks, lifting up dirty hands and coming to church, pretending to lift up holy hands. You ain't been living for God all week. None of us have. Come on now, let's get that in our spirit. None of us have lived for God all week. The Bible says for all have sinned and fallen. Suddenly, you know, when you slip, that's one thing. Slipping is gradual. Even to stub, sometimes you can catch yourself. But when you fall, that's a sudden thing. All have fallen short. Huh. Sick 
sickness is running rampant in the body of Christ. Spiritual sickness I'm talking. Spiritual sickness like backbiting, like jealousy, like hearsay, like hate, like murder. People are killing people with their tongue. You get up praising God, jumping and shouting, then you got somebody saying, you ain't got to do all that. Sit down. Well, don't you know I saw a brother doing something last week or, <coughs> excuse me, I heard that sister got mad at so-and-so and said so-and-so, killing, killing each other. Thank you. Killing each other with our tongues. This anointing is on me so hard right now. I, I didn't know God was going to leave me this way. I told you to look out now. That's a blessing. We're killing each other. Talking about each other. God knows we ain't got to do all this wrong to get put in the paper. We got the, the members talking about us. We got the jealous folk talking about us. Another spiritual sickness is complacency. Where a person may be satisfied where they are in Christ. Some people got saved and think, all right, now my search is over. No. No. <laughs> there, these are some of the many different spiritual diseases going on throughout the body and affecting these different members different ways. The church has a job. The ministers have a responsibility. God has put gifts in the body to fight against the devil and his demons. Now you go ahead and, I got to tell the truth, you go ahead and let the choir be full of homosexuals. You go ahead and you let the women come into church with splits up and down their back, cleavage showing, taking, uh, distracting the brother across the aisle from listening to the lesson. Because she needs a husband. She's lonely. He ain't right. He's weak. The devil has sent the spirit, a, a seducing spirit in the church to seduce our minds from watching and listening and doing what God say to do. And some pastors are not seeing them. You know why? Because they can't. They're saying that God called them to be a pastor, but they're not seeing with pastoral eyes. The devil walk right in their church and they sit in the pulpit, still nodding their head, thinking about how we're going to do the offering thing. No education. So you got to understand, what God did for Mr. Moody was one thing, but you can't go to Moody Bible Institute and always find Jesus. What God did for Oral Roberts was one thing, but you can't always go to Oral Roberts University and find Jesus. Sometimes you got to have a broken and contrite spirit and get down on your knees, fall on your face, turn off the TV, turn off the telephone, and just say, God, here I am. You want me, come and get me. You got to clean. I can't do this without you. I'm not talking to y'all sitting in the pews. I'm talking to y'all that God has given an assignment to. I'm talking to the leaders. I'm talking to the street ministers. I'm talking to the house ministers. I'm talking to those that have just received a prophecy that God got a job for you. It's going to take seeking. It's going to take self-denial. It's going to take you picking up that cross and putting it on your shoulder. It's going to take these things. As the Lord has blessed me to share with you, I, I'm not worthy of this ministry. I'm not worthy of the responsibility, but I thank God that when I wasn't thinking about him, that God said, yeah, even with your imperfections, even with your infirmities, even with your selfish desires, still I have chose you. 
the way he did with Paul and stopped him on the road to Damascus. And he just talked to him. And then later Paul said, he trusted me with this ministry. And I was a persecutor of the church. I want to read something to you. According to scripture, man has five natural enemies. One is the world. Galatians 1 and 4, 1 John 2 and 15, and James 4 and 4 tells us this. Two is the flesh. Romans 7 and 18, which we can turn there right quick, because we're coming to the closing of the show. But I'm going to leave something with you. Paul said in Romans 7 and 18, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. That's what Paul said. So Romans 7 and 18, Romans 8 and 8, Galatians 5 verse 17, 1 John 2 and 16 shows us that the flesh is one of mankind's five natural enemies. The third enemy is the devil. Matthew 13 verse 39, Ephesians 6 and 11. And Matthew 13 verse 39 says this. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. Okay? Four. The fourth natural enemy is spiritual death. John 5 and 24, John 8 and 51, Revelation 2 and 11. The fifth natural enemy is physical death. Psalms 55 verse 4, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 15. God put the body together and put gifts in the body to educate the believers on what is coming after them. How many minutes we got, sister? What you think? A oh, six? Okay. Oh, Lord. Mm -mm -mm. God gave these gifts in the body. To fight against the devil and his demons. That we may grow into the fullness of Christ. I want to read something to you from this book by Mary Kay Baxter called A Divine Revelation of Hell. And it's called, uh, her, her, her title I guess for this was Time is Running Out. That was her thought. I want to read to you something that she wrote. And, and before I do that, in case we go off the air while reading this, I want to say, make sure you stay tuned next Saturday at 3 o'clock on Channel 27, and God is going to use four minutes, okay? God is going to use Prophet Howard Boone to bring forth a word, and the following week, Pastor Keith Akins. So make sure you stay tuned for a dynamite, dynamic August, because God is going to be doing something in August. Listen, again, the Lord and I went into hell. Jesus said to me, my child, for this purpose you were born, to write and tell what I have told you and shown you, for these things are faithful and true. I have called you forth to tell the world through you that there is a hell, but I have made a way of escape. I will not show you all parts of hell, and there are hidden things which I cannot reveal to you, but I will show you much. Now come and see the powers of darkness and their end. We went again to the belly of hell and began to walk toward a small opening. I turned to look where we were entering and found that we were on the ledge beside a cell in the center of hell. We stopped in front of a cell in which was a beautiful woman. Over the top of the cell were the letters BC. I heard the woman say, Lord, I knew you would come someday. Please let me out of this place of torment. She was dressed in the clothes of an ancient era and she was very beautiful. I knew that she had been here for many centuries but could not die. Her soul was in torment. She began to pull at the bars and cry. Softly, Jesus said, peace be still. He spoke to her with sadness in his voice. Woman, you know why you are here. Yes, she said, but I can change. I remember when you let all those others out of paradise. 
I remember your words of salvation. I will be good now, she cried, and I will serve you. She clenched the bars of the cell on her tiny fist and began to scream, let me out, let me out. At that, she began to change before our eyes. Her clothing began to burn. Her flesh fell off, and all that remained was a black skeleton with burned out holes for eyes and a hollow shell of a soul. I watched in horror as the old woman fell to the floor. All her beauty had departed in a moment. It staggered my imagination to think that she had been here since before Christ was born. Jesus said to her, you knew on earth what your end would be. Moses gave you the law and you heard it, but instead of obeying my law, you chose to be an instrument in the hands of Satan, a soothsayer and witch. You even taught the art of witchcraft. You loved darkness rather than light and your deeds were evil. If you had repented with your heart, my father would have forgiven you, but now it is too late. Prophet Boone, in the name of Jesus, could you let people know what your message is going to, the title of it for next week? We got, what, two minutes? A minute? How many? How much time, Sheila? Two minutes. Next week. One minute. Next Don't week. give them a glimpse of everything. Just Time is running out. Don't let time run out on you. And leave that station right there for next week because you're going to get a blessing from the Lord. And I want everybody to tune in because the message is going to be very heavy because we need that. In Jesus' name. Thank you, brother, for coming today. Yes, I have a good time. And, and again, yes, you're going to be ready next week. I'm you got some for I'm ready now. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had the time. All right. Uh, in the name of Jesus, until next Saturday, may the Lord smile upon you. May heaven be with you. For prayer request and we're giving away a free Bible. Be the tenth caller, the twelfth caller at my Until house. then, we love you. God bless you. The tenth caller wins a Bible. Bye. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Terrence, you who? We, we off, Terrence? <laughs>
Satisfied. 